Good morning. So my name is Jennifer DeVoe, and as chair of this study, I would like to welcome everyone to our second meeting of the Committee on Applying Neurobiological and Social Behavioral Sciences from Prenatal Through Early Childhood Development, a Health Equity Approach of the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine. And this project is sponsored by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. So bear with me. I have um, several remarks that I need to read through here this morning before we get started with our first panel. So I'm joined with our committee members here and thrilled to be here. And we are going to ask them to introduce themselves in a few minutes, but I do have some things that I need to remind us about. This is an open on the record session. Interested individuals have been invited to attend as speakers and as observers. I would also like to remind everyone this is an information gathering session. The committee is just beginning the process of assembling our materials and we will be examining and discussing these in the course of making our findings, conclusions, and recommendations. Therefore, I ask everyone today to be extremely mindful of the fact that the committee has made no conclusions and that it would be a mistake for anyone to leave here today thinking otherwise. Comments made by individuals, including members of the committee, should not be interpreted as positions of the committee or of the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine. In addition, committee members typically ask probing questions and these information gathering sessions, and these will not be indicative of their personal views or the committee's views. This committee's report is expected to be released in the summer of 2019. Seems like a long ways away, but it's right around the corner. Uh, the committee will deliberate thoroughly before writing our draft report, and once the draft report is written, it will go through a rigorous review by experts who are anonymous to the committee. This is our second open meeting and it will include presentations and discussions on a variety of topics to fulfill the committee's information gathering needs and to include a public comment session. In addition to the presentations we will hear, the committee has reviewed information relevant to our charge and will continue to gather additional information over the course of the study. Thank you to all of our speakers today. Your comments will be followed by a question and answer period, primarily focused on clarification of fact by committee members at which time we will ask probing questions and questions of clarification. If time allows during the sessions, we will open the floor to include other meeting attendees who may wish to ask questions, both those in person and those who are joining us via the webcast. And also at the end of the day, we have a period open for public comment and audience members and webcast viewers will be able to make very brief comments at that time. If you do wish to provide a comment during the public comment period this afternoon, please add your name to the sign-up sheet at the registration desk. For the record, speakers will be asked to disclose whether they receive any funding for activities related to the topics being discussed today and the sources of such funding, for example, a government agency or foundation funding. For more information on this study, you can visit the project website available in your attendee packets. Copies of the committee and speaker bios are on display at the registration table and are also available on the project website. Almost done. If you have any logistical questions as the day moves on, please talk to our staff at the registration table and around the room. The staff are wearing green name badges. This meeting is being webcast live and recorded. Available speaker presentations and videos will be posted to the project website one to two weeks after this meeting. And of note, one of our committee members, Bill Wright, could not join us today, but all the other committee members, I believe, are here. So we will go around the table and briefly introduce ourselves, giving you our names and uh, current affiliations. As I mentioned, there's also brief bios of the committee members and speakers in your meeting materials if you want further information. Okay, that's it. So without further ado, um, I will introduce myself first and then we'll have our committee members introduce themselves. I'm Jennifer DeVoe. I'm a family physician and health services researcher and I chair the Department of Family Medicine at Oregon Health and Sciences University in Portland, Oregon, where yes, it is three hours earlier and still a very early morning. So I had, have had my first cup of coffee, however. So um, maybe we'll go this direction with Yomi. Good morning, I am Iyoma Iruga. I am Chief Research Officer at High School Education Research Foundation. Hi, I'm Cynthia Garcia Cole. 
I'm a developmental psychologist by training. I've worked mostly with minority populations and populations are at risk for some sociocultural issue and biomedical issue. And I'm at the University of Puerto Rico Medical School right now. Good morning, my name is Myra Parker. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences at the University of Washington. Good morning, I'm Jim Perrin. I'm a general pediatrician at the Mass General Hospital for Children and a professor at Harvard Med School uh, and delighted to be here. Hi, I'm Natalie Slobin. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Maryland College Park in the Department of Epidemiology and Biostatistics. Good morning, my name is Ebony Carter. I'm a maternal fetal medicine physician at Washington University in St. Louis. Good morning, um, my name is Elizabeth Davis. I am a professor of applied economics at the University of Minnesota. Good morning, I'm Pat Levitt. I'm the chief scientific officer at Children's Hospital Los Angeles and a professor of neuroscience at University of Southern California. Good morning, um, Albert Watt from the Alliance for Early Success. I'm a senior policy director there. Good morning, I'm Amy Rowling McGee. I'm the president of the Health Policy Institute of Ohio. Good morning, I'm Michael Liu. I'm a professor and senior associate dean at George Washington University, formerly director of the Federal Maternal Child Health Bureau. <clears throat> Hi, uh, Sonia Luther. I'm a professor at Arizona State University and also Emerita Teachers College, Columbia University. Good morning. I'm Dr. Nadine Burke Harris. I'm a pediatrician and I'm the founder and CEO of the Center for Youth Wellness in San Francisco. Great. And thanks again to this wonderful committee. We have a uh, great adventure ahead and um, look forward to working with you all. And next we have Dr. Victor Zhao, president of the National Academy of, Com National Academy of Medicine. And he has prepared some opening remarks for the committee, which we are going to watch over video. He apologizes that he cannot be here in person. He is on the West Coast for another meeting today. So we're going to go ahead and play the video with Dr. Victor Zhao. Uh, welcome. I'm Victor Zhao, the president of the National Academy of Medicine. I want to thank you for being here, and I'm so pleased that so many of you are able to join us on this committee meeting. This committee is about applying new biologic and social behavioral sciences from prenatal to early childhood development as a health equity approach. I'm sorry I can't be with you. However, I'd like to say a few words to frame the, uh, the uh, committee's work. This study is second of a series of uh, reports under the National Academy of Medicine's Culture of Health program. This is a five-year program supported by the Robert Johnson Foundation. And it aims to identify conditions and solutions needed for all to achieve equitably good health and well-being and to examine policies that, and practices support a culture that promotes health. Now, as all of you know, some of the most important determinants of health are socioeconomic factors. That includes income, education, environment, neighborhood resources, and many others. To achieve health equity, we must pay attention to the root causes of social inequity and disparities. So these factors affect health at all ages, but we do know that the effects on infants and young children are particularly dramatic. That is to say, the earliest years of our lives are crucial in many ways. These years set our path towards or away from better health for the rest of our life. So this is the purpose of your study. That is to look at how we can use science to inform policy and practices. Let me read the statement of task. Neurobiologic and social behavioral research indicate that early life conditions, including social support and uh, adversity, shape prenatal and early childhood development. Now, programs and policies designed to mitigate these adverse conditions have not always had the positive effect 
intended for the majority of recipients of the programs. This is where you come in. Because scientific evidence can be used more effectively to understand subgroup differences in response to early life conditions and to better inform efforts to advance health equity through policy actions, program development, practice changes, system reform, and research. That, in fact, is a statement of task for you. So if you look at the work done at the Academy from year 2000 on from neurons to neighborhoods, which laid out the science base, to more recently 2017 report, Communities in Action, Pathway to Health Equity, which laid out the community base, I think you have, in fact, a rich base to use to advance your work. So your committee will build on these reports and draw on the many insights from the 21st century science towards addressing the following questions. One, to provide a brief overview of stressors that affect brain development and health. Two, to identify promising models and opportunities for translation from science to action. Three, identify outcomes measure and to develop a roadmap to apply the science to tailor intervention, and finally, to provide specific recommendations. You have a big task ahead of you, but a very important one. And I want to thank you again for being here, and for those who are not here but part of the committee for working very hard for the next few months towards addressing this issue. I know your experience, your expertise, and wisdom and judgment will ensure a very successful report which can provide guidance towards a culture of health and health equity starting from early childhood. I also want to thank Robert Wood Johnson Foundation for providing the stimulus and the support for this cultural health program. And I think this is one of a series of reports that should truly influence the culture of health in this country. Thank you very much.